Hey, what's up? My name is Cameron with Motion Science, and today I'm going to show you how to create this. This is a TV intro that was inspired by the title sequence for the girl on the milk carton. And so without any further ado, let's jump right into After Effects and let me show you how I created this. First off, we've got a VHS layer here as our base, and you can see the opacity is turned down to 20%. If I turn this all the way up to 100%, you're going to see it's just some footage of some VHS static noise moving across the screen, but we want to make this fairly subtle, so we're going to drop this down to 20%. And you can see now it's just kind of sitting nicely in the background there. The next thing we have is some fractal noise here, and this is just a solid layer. And in this solid layer, we have the fractal noise applied. It's a cloudy fractal type, soft linear, contrast 93. Basically, some very simple things going on here. We also have an evolution keyframe set for this. And then underneath that fractal noise, we also have a tint effect applied. And it's just giving it kind of like a blue tint, like a TV tint. We also have a Gaussian blur applied at a level of six. And this is to soften everything up because going back to CRT monitors, nothing was crystal clear. Everything was kind of fuzzy and soft. On top of that, the last layer of the effects is a displacement map. And we can turn that on. We can see that we're actually referencing the layer two, which if I go back here to layer two and turn that on, and let's go ahead and just solo that. This is a really nice static texture that we're gonna be using to drive our displacement map. So we'll go ahead and turn that back off. And we've got a few keyframes set here for displacement mapping, basically just to kind of transition in the piece here. Just a couple simple keyframes from a negative 50 displacement map to a negative three. So very, very simple. And then we have some type here, and this is the bottom layer of our type uh, for the title sequence. So right off the top, this doesn't look right. It looks too digital, it looks too crystal clear. And we're going to apply a fast box blur to that to soften it up so it's already looking better. We're also going to apply a displacement map here. Uh, again, referencing the same layer two and some very simple keyframes for horizontal and vertical displacement. And we're also going to put a displacement map two on here, and that is going to actually reference the layer itself. So those two are turned on, and let's go ahead and take that fractal noise and let's track mat it. Let's say we want the fractal noise to go through the type and for the type not to be on screen. So that's what we have here. So if we play this back, you can see it's looking really interesting. If I hit U to reveal keyframes on the type, you can see what's going on here. It's just creating some really interesting movement, right? Some really interesting displacement. So then above this, we have another fractal layer here. And it's the same thing. We've got some fractal noise, soft, linear, cloudy. We're going to turn on a tent and some Gaussian blur as well. And we are going to set this to track map the layer above it, which is the night wind she. So we'll select that. And now we can see there is our type looking you know, a little bit uh, analog like it's starting to look pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and turn our glitch layer, which is our texture layer on top. And you can see this layer is too digital. So we're gonna turn on the fast box blur, just like everything else to soften it up. And that's looking pretty nice. I'm liking that. We're also going to turn on this layer above that. And I should mention the layer that we just turned on, we did set to a transfer mode of screen. And we're gonna turn on the layer above that, analog noise set to screen as well. And you can see that's just adding some really nice kind of speckles in there. And if I solo this, just so you can see it here, this is some really nice noise texture for our CRT monitor. And if I unsolo that and put everything together, it's starting to look pretty cool, right? If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric, and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the Motion Science membership at www.motionscience.tv slash mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Now let's go back to the training. So the next composition, what I've done here is I've taken all of our layers from the previous comp, which we see here, they're all lined up at zero, zero, zero. And I've taken them and I've move them over to 14 frames into the timeline. So that's what we have here. This is from the previous comp. All layers in red here are from the previous composition. So essentially there's just some black space here with some texture from our VHS two layer, and then the type comes on. And I want to uh, transition all of this on. I wanna create 
like almost like a TV kind of turning on to bring this type on. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna apply a deep glow effect here. And that's just gonna give everything a little bit brighter appearance. It's also gonna give it kind of a soft glow. You can see it's set to a radius of 250 and exposure of 0.2. And again, trying to just emulate some CRT old monitors. Now, if I was doing this project for a client, I have a set of plugins that I would pull from, but because I wanted to show this on YouTube, I thought it'd be best to minimize the plugin. So I think the only third-party plugin we are using here is Deep Glow. Below that, we've got a glitch layer here. So we'll go ahead and turn that on as well. And that is to transition out our piece, which we see here. It's a really nice texture. Let's go ahead and turn on the same layer here at the beginning. And you can see here it is. It's just a nice transitional moment. We've got fast box blur applied to it again. We've got levels applied to it as well. This is without levels and this is with levels. Just to kind of boost some of those highlights there, some of the white values. So what we have here is a pixel image of a girl that we thought would be interesting to kind of put into the title sequence. If you haven't seen the girl on the milk carton title sequence, go check it out. It's really cool. But it's about a girl who went missing and got printed onto a milk carton to help find her. So what we did was we took this glitch footage that's underneath here. If I solo this, you can see here it is. And it is pulling, it is track matting the layer above it, layer six, which we see right here. So if I turn that layer off, what's happening is, is this glitch layer is being shown through the image of the girl, right? And it's also got a displacement map applied to it, which we can see here, reading from this glitch layer. And if I just preview this little section here, you can see it takes that image and it just distorts it and makes it look very glitchy and cool and everything we want it to be. So now when we turn everything on, this is what we have. We have a transition in to the type and we have a transition out of the type. Transition in and a transition out. Pretty cool stuff. So we can take this even a step further by now applying some finishing effects to it and that's what we have here. The very first effect we have is a adjustment layer with Venetian blinds applied to it. And if I turn on the first Venetian blinds, it's very, very subtle here. And if I zoom in, it's just creating some horizontal lines across the image, so kind of like a slit scan effect. You can see the transition completeness set to 3%, very minimal, a 90 degree direction, width of five and a feather of one. And if I turn on the second Venetian effect, it's a vertical here. So it's creating some little boxes in here, like almost like pixels on a TV screen. Again, 3%. The direction is now turned to zero, so it's up and down, five and one. So that's the first adjustment layer. Now the second adjustment layer is a grid VR glitch. And that is, the first effect is just like we said, a, a grid. And it's a very small grid, a width of three, a height of two, and a border of 1.5. And this is just adding to the pixel effect. So it's just kind of like adding another layer to that square pixel effect. And then on top of this is a VR digital glitch effect that we've played around with the settings a little bit. If we turn that on, it's like it's shifting the channels and we're seeing more purple and greens, just like on an old CRT, the, the pixels aren't completely aligned and things are kind of shifting. On top of that, we have another adjustment layer called optic, and that's exactly what it is. It's an optics compensation and a transform effect. So if I zoom out here, this is with optics compensation off, and this is with it on. And it's just kind of stretching that image to make it look like it's part of a CRT monitor. And then we're using a transform effect on top of that scaled up to 115% that we can don't have these empty black edges around. And that's all it is, very, very simple. On top of that, we have an adjustment layer for color. And the first color effect applied is lumetri color. And if I turn that on, it's gonna give it it's gonna take it straight out of that kind of purple, green, black and white world into more of a, a bluish tint world. And we can really see that like here. So if I turn the Lumetri color off, you can see it's black and white and then kind of like that blue tinted type. If I turn it on, it's bringing everything into this kind of bluish teal world. And then the curves is just a very simple contrast curve. And if I turn that on, it just creates a little more contrast, a little darker in the blacks, a little brighter in the whites. And then our very last layer that we have applied here is a noise layer. Again, it's just an adjustment layer with noise set to 10%. And what that noise layer does is it just kind of blends everything together. So now if we preview this, I'll show you what we have. And there's our final piece, right? You can see where it started and where it ended up just by adding some really interesting glitch textures, applying 
a series of layers of effects and then finishing effects over the top of everything to really kind of polish it and bring it to that next level. But I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you learned something new. My name is Cameron with Motion Science and I will see you in the next video.